Yeah, the lyrics, we kind of took the same approach as we did with the first record where we all went our separate ways on lyric writing. You know, Dave had all his lyrics, I had all mine. Um, Alex had his. And uh, so basically how we did it from the first record to the second record where I would write a really long story. Uh, then I would give it to Alex, Alex would edit it. You know, Mark had, had like this abundance of lyrics, which is great, you know, they were all good lyrics, but they, you know, they needed to be uh, trimmed and uh, sort of, you know, uh, comp compacted. Or on the flip side, Dave would send me what he has for basically a baseline of lyrics. I'll go in and add my two cents and then we'll create a story from uh, what I call skeletons. And we'll sit there, we'll, we go word by word, note for note on it. And uh, on this record, I think there's a lot more collaboration on lyrics. I found on the first record, me and Mark uh, Mengi had a really fun time collaborating on lyrics. Um, I think probably one of the first things I threw out, we were sitting in the studio on the first record, just and that became um, Pledge of Allegiance and also uh, Can't Kill the Devil, and that just kind of started it. So I knew on this record, Again, same thing, I always sort of have a little scrapbook of ideas and titles and maybe one stanza or in a chorus or something. And I know I can take those and throw those to Mark and, and, and if he responds favorably, he'll go up, I got this, and he'll just go with it. And one of those moments, um, we're on the Megadeth tour, we're actually playing in Windsor, Canada, which is the only part of Canada, as I understand, that's actually south of the United States. And you're looking across the river, I was on the life cycle at the gym, and I'm looking across the river at Detroit. And this whole idea just, just hit me about corporate greed, which you know is kind of a common theme in heavy metal and rock and roll lyrics. But I started just spitballing these ideas into my little text pad on my iPhone, and, and I, I hit Mark and go, dude, I got this idea, and I send it to him. And, and the same thing, he goes, oh, this is awesome, I got this. And the, the, just the working title I think we had was Wires and Thieves, and it's, it's funny that that made it all the way to the final. Dave and I wrote whew, together at least five uh, songs lyrically together uh, on this record. Um, Alex weighed in a lot now with the lyrics, uh, more so with fine-tuning, editing, working with the vocalist and, and their harmonies and their melodies and trying to find that perfect vocal line uh, with choruses and whatnot. So I did more, more of the editing, but in the process of the editing, sometimes I would throw in a line to, or, or two, to, just to, as a suggestion, to make, maybe to make it rhyme with a previous Part or just to, to improve the sound, and so there were there were, are a few songs where I would throw out lines as suggestions to Mark. Maybe you could do this. This is totally different, and he said, "Oh, that's great. That's going in." And then the song uh, "Impulse Control." Um, I remember I stumbling upon that term. I think you know in an article about psychology or. Something like that, and uh, thinking, oh, that that would be an interesting topic, uh, and, and a title. So that song was one that fell to me. I wasn't, I was so busy between, um, yeah, playing all all the rhythm guitars except for Dave's part on uh, on uh, Voodoo, and um, yeah, playing dueling soloist on <laughs> several of the songs. Um, now, not just with myself, as well as uh, Joe, Anita, and Andreas. I had my work cut out for me, so I wasn't looking to write lyrics, but Impulse was one of these things that just didn't, nobody had come up with lyrics for it yet, so um, I said, sure, okay, I'll, I'll take that one out. So we were all pretty involved with the lyrics, but the themes on this record, um, pretty pretty angry uh, with everything going on in the world today, whether one is a, a Republican, Democrat, right wing, left wing, it really doesn't matter. Um, it, it, it's a pretty uh, fuck you attitude standpoint on what's going on in the world today. Um, so a lot of the lyrics are based off of that, you know, not so much about a single person, more so as a society and as a country. Um, there's also uh, the continuation from MA1 where I kind of indulge a little deeper and a little more into my personal background and story and what's going on. You know, from the first record to this record, there are three songs on that first record that talk about a, a certain subject matter, 
where I continue that story. It's kind of like a, a part two, if you will. So three songs on MA1 and three songs on MA2 all link up together um, to form one cohesive story, which was planned but not planned. I just kind of, it was just flowing in the way uh, the lyric writing were going. So it, it's, you know, pretty angry and aggressive lyrical record. And working with all these singers on it, you know, we had to get their approval first because you can't just give someone words like this and go, hey man, do you mind singing this? And uh, they have to believe in it as well, especially with what's going on in the world today.